Hey Brad, I just wanted to create this short video, sort of in a sense of enthusiasm, if you will, to give you an overview of the Entora build that I've talked about in the email. Now, what you can see here is the documentation using what's referred to as the default Entora theme. So you can see uh, like a general home name here, your supplemental navigation bar here, which I have modeled on the existing readme.drone docs. And you can see the cloud enterprise support, documentation, mailing list, etc. And then here you can see the main navigation. You can see that if I were to hover to hover over it, we come to the home page, we can then expand out any one of these. And I'll just find one that has sort of a reasonably deep level of nesting. I think this one goes deeper, yeah. So you can see here, we can go down to about six levels of headings. If we come down to SSL certificates, you can see here that we've got the main header, then a subheader. Um, don't worry about some of the content here. I didn't do a complete conversion from Markdown to ASCII doc because what I'm intending to do here is, is more just give an idea of what it would like, sort of without going too far, because you know, if you're not behind it, it is your project, and I don't want to try and sort of be over-enthusiastic and try and take it away, but I still want to give enough of an idea so that you can see or get a feel for whether you believe this is the right path to go down or whether or not. So you can see here we can scroll down, you can see here a, a code block, another code block, third code block. Uh, we can see here we move to another link and so the same sort of thing applies. If we go to, here we go. And like I say, you can see sort of more and more examples. You can see that you navigate through on the left and anything is very quickly available and you can also then close that back up and your main content for the particular section is located here on the right. Now this is the default theme. You can customize it as much as you'd like. Naturally it's you know HTML, JavaScript, CSS. You can put in search here, just like you have on the existing docs. You can add a sidebar on the right, you know, what's on this page as well. And so that's basically sort of what it looks like. It's it comes with that default layout, so you don't have to create it. You don't have to customize it or think about it. It uses those standard web conventions that have been around since what the dawn of the web as it were. Oh, one other thing I forgot was that it also has auto-generated breadcrumbs here. But one of the, the standout features, at least for me, and maybe I'm getting carried away, maybe I'm overhyping it, but it really appealed to me when I was working on the own cloud docs is this little element here. Now at this point, it, it probably doesn't have a lot, a lot of meaning, but what it does is that it allows you to have version documentation. Now what I mean is here, we've let's assume this is say the 1.0 release, but maybe you are up to say the 10.0 release. Users by clicking here can go to the particular version of the documentation that matches their implementation that they have. So you don't have to sort of create unnecessary home pages or navigation pages. The user can just click through, through here, pick the one they want, and then the, up, the documentation updates. Like I say, it doesn't kind of really work when you only have one version, but that said, I hope it kind of gets the gives you the idea. Now, as I said, I'm kind of a little bit effervescing with my enthusiasm here, but I guess I'm just trying to say that the output of the Antora docs is something that I find uses common conventions. It's really straightforward, and it lets us just focus on the documentation and not on the layout and the conventions of the tool itself. Now to generate that, if I have a terminal window open, yes I do, all you have to do is, I can see here I have some old commands, so we'll just skip through that. Uh, all you then have to do is, we do site there, and that's it, and that will generate the docs. So as a build, don't mind that, that's just from some of the non-completely migrated documentation from Markdown to ASCII doc, but that's all we'd have to do. So you have the necessary tools, which is mainly ASCII doctor. You can then build the documentation quite easily in a build pipeline. So it's not a whole lot of tools to install. 
Uh, what does a file look like? I think I have one open. If not, I'll just open one. Get one in here. Here is an example of the directory structure that Intori uses. Everything is listed under modules. So here you can see that we have root is like the, the default or the main module. And you can have one or you can have as many as you need. Root being the default. So we have then an assets directory which contains any attachments or any images, examples for code examples. I don't have any in this case. And then pages is your actual source content. So you can see here I've copied over directly with just a minor rename of one directory. All the content from the Hugo build. It's just been converted using Pandoc from Markdown to ASCII doc. If we look at an ASCII doc file, it's in many ways almost identical to Markdown. Uh, for headers, instead of a hash, it has an equal sign. This is an anchor to this particular header. If we scroll down, you can see here this is a paragraph just like in Markdown. Here's a source code block. I'm trying to find something a bit more interesting. Here is a, a link. Here is a slightly more detailed source code block so you can specify there in what way it should be, uh, in what way the, the syntax should be highlighted. Here we have an example of a table. So here's a caption for the table. Here's some details to control the formatting. So we'll uh, indicate that it has three columns and that the second or middle column should be twice the width of the left and the right. And then we'll also say that the first row is a header row so that this row here, like all the text in there, will have uh, the, the, was it the, the T head and the TH instead of the normal um, TRTD for a standard HTML table. Some simple inline formatting. And this is the first column, second column, third column. Simple formatting as with Markdown. And I'm hoping if I scroll down a bit further, I'll have something more kind of juicy to give you. Unfortunately, I don't. But anyway, that's an example of ASCII doc. And if we go back here for a navigation file, which shows you, sort of, you know, tells Antora how to build up its left-hand side navigation tree. It's basically a set of links. These mean um, an external reference or a reference to, to somewhere within the particular Antora project. So you can say, so you see here that this, the, the link that the user sees will be installation and that will go to installation index.adoc, which is under pages here, installation index.adoc. Now I realize this is a bit of a, a whirlwind rapid run through, but I hope it helps build on the email to help show sort of why I'm so enthusiastic. I realize that it may not. So if you'd like to see more about it, I am more than happy to, to sit down for a good solid run through for as much as your time permits. I hope it conveys the enthusiasm that I feel for the Antora project.